What's going on? Brian Tong here and welcome to Googleicious. It's all the Google goodness that we can pack inside of a show. Now this year has really become the year of the smartwatch and in case you guys didn't know, the Oxford English Dictionary just added that term to their list of words including tech savvy, amazeballs, and YOLO. All things which I live by. Now there's competing companies for the wearable space and they're really still trying to figure this whole market out. But in the Android world, it's all about the Moto 360. But now it looks like Best Buy just made the boo-boo of the year after they posted the 360's price and its entire feature list about two and a half weeks before its official announcement. Features like being waterproof over three feet for up to 30 minutes, including a built-in optical heart rate monitor, a built-in pedometer, a vibration mode for alerts, and Bluetooth 4.0 support were probably things Motorola wanted to announce themselves. But this is also the second time they've leaked the 249 price tag for the Moto 360. Yikes, who's getting fired for that one? But I don't even blame them. They're called Best Buy, not Best at Keeping Secrets. All right, Android Wear has separated itself as the top smartwatch platform right now. It still needs work, but Google is pushing hard in creating four ads featuring the watch in action, including finding useful information like asking a smartwatch, how much does an elephant weigh while you're on a safari adventure? See, that's the first thing I would do, especially since there's a solid cell signal that's really easy to get out in the middle of Africa. A nice heads up for Google I.O. attendees who were promised a Moto 360. Google has started requesting address information to start shipping them out, so if you didn't hear anything from them, you can uh, just cry and curl up in a ball. But if you missed out there, don't worry. The Korean Times reports that LG is planning to unveil the G Watch 2 at IFA in September. That's less than six months after announcing the first G Watch, and it's planning to be a more high-end smartwatch with an OLED display. So get ready for what I like to call September. It's really going to be one crazy month in tech with smartphones and watches and tablets and who knows what else. Now we're expecting the next flagship phone from Motorola called the X1 this time around. Phone Arena has revealed benchmarks for the device and it's expected to have a 5.2 inch screen, 2 gigs of RAM and a 12 megapixel camera with 4K HD video support with what's believed to be a Snapdragon 801 processor clocking in at 2.5 gigahertz. It's hands down the fastest Motorola phone we've seen to date based on early specs. Now Sprint also announced they'll be getting the HTC One E8. Think of it as a more affordable plastic version of the current HTC One M8 phone. No official price point or release date was given, but expected to be around $100 cheaper. And in a concept that could breathe some new life into the design of current smartphones, Sharp, known more for their television sets, unveiled this teaser of their Sharp Aquos Crystal 5-inch phone with a 720p display, but most importantly, its near invisible bezel around the phone. That thing screams, do me baby, but for whatever reason, they're going to be wasting it away on mid-range phone specs featuring a Snapdragon 400 processor. But that design, goodness, that looks amazing. And we need to see more of that in uh, less of this. And in other product news, the Nook and Samsung will be making an announcement this week to show off their rumored co-branded Galaxy Tab 4 e-reader. They decided to tease us with this video featuring a disturbing trend in teasers that started with Amazon. This is absolutely amazing. This is so awesome. This is brilliant. This is, uh, this is great. The suspense is killing me. Now the Nook line had previously decided to quit the tablet business before changing its mind with this Samsung partnership, so we'll see what they have to show off. And Samsung, not one to be complacent, recently acquired the home automation company SmartThings for about $200 million according to reports. SmartThings develops motion sensors, light switches, and power plugs that can be controlled remotely through your Android or iOS device using an app. SmartThings plans to continue running as an independent company under Samsung's Open Innovation Group, and the smart home is really another one of the emerging battlegrounds in the tech space that has a long ways to go. We saw Google acquire Nest in the beginning of 2014. Samsung just swooped up smart things, and if you're curious about Apple, they've done nothing major here up to this point. All right, that's gonna do it for this week's show. Email us at googleicious at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong, and I'll answer you uh, after I clean out my parents' fish tank. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time for some more of that Googleicious. Googleicious.